I've prepared this very simple demo here in Studio One using Addictive Drums 2 for the drums, Modo Bass 2 for a very simple bass line, and this B3 organ from Arturia. And it's this organ which is kind of the star of the show because to this instrument I have applied the Auto Filter plugin. This is a stock plugin which comes with Presonus Studio One, and you can have a lot of fun with it. Before we find out what fun I've been having with it, let's just have a quick listen to a part of this demo without auto filter switched on. Okay, I think you get the general idea. So let's switch the plugin on and have a listen to what fun I've been having. Now you may absolutely hate that, just in case you do and you just prefer that plain uh, B3 organ that you heard earlier. Hang on to the end because I'm going to show you what something I would adjust on this plugin which would make it the way I'd actually use it in a real song. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I want to start off by apologising that you can't see my face in today's video. I'm still in the process of moving from one studio to another and setting up a camera today was going to be a little bit too difficult. I wanted to get a video out for you, but I do promise that you'll see my wonderful face in a future video. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below if you don't think I've got a wonderful face and I should keep it hidden forever. Anyway, moving on, we're going to go through this logically from left to right, starting off with the filter type, okay? Now you can see at the top here that we have eight different filters that we can choose from. These are filter emulations. I'm not going to go through what each of them is, but let's just listen and hear some of the differences between them. You can hear a big difference there, can't you, between, say, the analog filter and the comb filter, for example. So we've got those. Now, I should point out that the three in the middle here, these are SVF filters, which stands for state variable filters, have an additional control available when they're selected. This is so you can blend between it being a low pass filter, a band pass filter and a high pass filter. Have a listen to the difference between those three. Now, in addition to having one of these filters selected here, you can also select another filter at the bottom here. Yeah, you just go ahead and select one of these. I'll go for MG18, for example, and it enables a second filter. Now, there's two ways that it can work. You can either use it in parallel with the original, so both filters are working on the original signal at the same time, or you can have them chained. Yeah, but with chained, it goes from one to another, so the sound is initially affected by the first filter and then goes to the second. The same applies with this. We've got the same number of filters, but we do also have a button here on this one, which is the bypass button. So in our filter section, we have two main controls, cutoff and resonance. Let's just have a listen to cutoff initially. I'm going to put it all the way down to the bottom here. It's set to 30 hertz and let's have a listen. You can hear that we're hearing mostly low information. That's because we do have it set to 30 hertz and we have a low pass filter set at the moment, okay? If we were to turn this cutoff all the way up to the top, uh, to 16 kilohertz here, it's essentially uh, creating a low pass filter of 16 kilohertz. It's not gonna do much, have a listen. Not an or there's not so much happening there. Yeah, that's the combination of those two parameters working together. Likewise, if we were to set this to a high pass filter, yeah, have a listen to this when it's down low. Again, there's not a lot happening there, but you'll hear it all with a high pass filter if we have it up high. Okay. 
Yes, yeah, so just take note of that. that this uh, filter cutoff control is going to interact with uh, the values you have set here if you're using an SVF type filter okay moving on to resonance i'm just gonna go through from zero all the way up to 100 percent. you'll hear the difference Now, if we happen to be using both filters, like I suggested earlier, let's just switch both of them on, then each of them has an envelope and LFO control here, adjustable from zero to 100%. If we go below zero, then it's just phase inverted. So I've switched my drums and bass back on so that we can hear what this organ's now doing in context, because I wanna talk about the speed section. At the moment, I have sync turned on, which means it's gonna sync to the tempo of my project. And I have this filter, which we can see here, happening over the course of one bar. Have a listen. So I could, of course, switch to something like, say, eight times per bar. Let's do that. Yeah, musical value like that. And have a listen now. But we don't have to use it in sync musically. We can switch this off. And I think we can have a lot of fun with this just by setting a time. Now, um, you, I reckon you could automate this and get some really great effects. Have a listen. And also relating to speed, we have this attack, these attack and release controls here. So these relate to the volume envelope and affect the attack and release times of the cutoff and resonance. So we've already seen the LFO display here. And at the bottom, we can change to different waveform types here. We've got four main ones. The first one that we can see here is triangle. Then we have sine, we've got sawtooth, and we've got square. Let's just have a listen to the difference between them. And we can flip them, just invert them by clicking this flip button, okay? And you can visually see the difference there. Now, in addition to that, we have what I was using in the demo at the beginning, this 16-step kind of sequencer here, okay? Let's just have a listen to this with the default pattern that it's got here. <laughs> Okay, so we can get some really interesting things happening here. If we just draw um, the lowest value in at the bottom, okay, let's just do that. Have a listen to that. Or just this filter type over here. Not much happening there. If we push this up, we'll hear it okay. So what we're going to hear there depends um, on what we've got set here to the filter type. If we put that all out to the top, we'll hear all the high frequency stuff. So we can set values in between that. If we just randomly sort of draw some things in here, have a listen. Now I set mine to a kind of a musical value. So I just went gradually through and I set each step. You can use random stuff like that if you wish, of course. So we have two controls in the color section. Hopefully the first one's pretty obvious when you hear it. This is the drive control. Have a listen. You can add in some nice overdrive there. And finally, this control is disabled at the moment, cut off to shift. So this becomes enabled when you actually use a second filter. So I'll switch one on over here. And essentially this is an offset control. It's applied to the second filter and it's an offset to this filter cutoff control over here. So at the top of the global section, we have an output gain control. Now this is pretty important. You would have heard earlier that sometimes when I make adjustments to these filters, they can get pretty quiet, okay? You can get quite a lack of volume or you can get quite intense and get an increase of volume. So this becomes an important control because you wanna sort of try and get it back to where it was originally in the mix. You can either do that manually or you can leave it on auto gain as it's set here. I think that's 
pretty effective. Now, finally, we have this mix control. You all know what it does, yeah? When the mix is up full, then we're hearing the effect of the plugin entirely, all the way down to zero, and we're not hearing the plugin at all. We're just hearing that organ as it was initially. And probably in the demo I played at the beginning, I found that what I had created was a little too aggressive. And um, what I would almost certainly do would be to blend this in using the mix control with the original organ. Have a listen to that. That is, of course, if you want it to be that subtle. If you've enjoyed this tutorial and you want to find out more about Persona Studio One stock plugins, take a look at this playlist here. I'm gradually working my way through all of them so that you guys can be really up to speed with these great plugins which are included with Persona Studio One.